I'm interested in understanding the mechanism of insulin secretion from the pancreatic beta cells. And what we discovered some years ago is that there is an ion channel involved in this process known as the ATP sensitive potassium channel. Subsequently, it was discovered by a colleague of mine, Patrick Rosman, also at Oxford, that the drugs which are used to treat type 2 diabetes work by closing this channel. And more recently, my colleague Andrew Hattersley at the University of Exeter found that mutations in either of the two subunits that make up the channel cause diabetes at birth, i.e. neonatal diabetes. This is a very rare disease and it's quite distinct from either type 1 or type 2 diabetes. We showed that what the mutations do is they prevent ATP from closing the channel and thus the channel is open all the time and no insulin is released. Many iron channels are associated with both human and animal diseases, but it's not enough to understand how the mutation affects the function of the iron channel at the molecular level. What you really need to do if you want to understand the disease is to see what it does at the level of the organism and at the level of the whole animal. In other words, what is known as integrative physiology. Although much of my work has been concerned with neonatal diabetes, this rare genetic form, I'm also interested in type 2 diabetes, which affects about 336 million people worldwide. We know it involves a genetic predisposition and environmental factors, but the huge challenge is to discover what those genes are and how they predispose to the disease. One of the big challenges of physiology today is persuading governments that translational research takes a very long time. It's not something that happens in just a five-year timescale. I have been very fortunate. I have seen our research translated from the bench to the bedside. But translational research takes a very long time. I first found the channel in 1984, and it wasn't until 2004 that Andrew found the first mutations, and it was possible to provide a different therapy for children with this rare form of diabetes, from insulin injections to a pill once or twice a day. And this has, of course, transformed their lives. But the reason that we scientists do science is not because we ever imagine that our work will have an impact on people's lives. We do it because it is inherently exciting. And in my view, being the first to see something new is unbelievably exciting. And that's what makes you stick with it when times get tough.